Welcome to my presentation. In this presentation, we shall see how to find the inverse of a matrix. We will use the Gauss-Jordan elimination method to solve this, uh, to find the inverse of this matrix. The matrix we have in this example is as follows. Let's say A is a matrix and the elements of this matrix are 1, negative 1, 0, and then 1, 0, negative 1, and then negative 6, 2, 3. So if we have a 3 by 3 matrix and we're going to use the Gauss-Jordan uh, elimination method. According to the Gauss-Jordan elimination method, we said, step, we'll call that as step number one. We said, if A is a matrix, and if we want to find the inverse of that, we're going to partition it with an uh, identity matrix, and then by performing the row operations, we're going to make, we're going to convert this into um, when we when we perform the row operations, the identity matrix is going to come on to the left hand side of the partition, and the matrix which we arrive on the right hand side will be the inverse of that matrix. So this is what we're going to. This is the underlining principle um, be, behind Gauss-Jordan elimination method. So we'll use that to we'll apply that concept to this problem here. So the given matrix is. 1, negative 1, 0, and then 1, 0, negative 1, and then negative 6, 2, 3, we'll partition it, and then this time the identity matrix will be a 3 by 3 matrix, and we have, we can write that as 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 1. Uh, once again, the one of the properties of identity matrix uh, a 3 by 3 identity matrix is that the elements along the major diagonal should be 1's and then the elements elsewhere should be zeros, and that's what we have here. So let us perform the row operations in here. So when we look at this, if we were to draw a line along this major diagonal here, we already have a 1 um, uh, on the first row, first column location. So we will go forward and then see if we can, we, if we can arrive, if we can achieve a zero in this location here. We want a zero in this location, and to to achieve that, we're going to do the row. We're going to perform the row operations. The way to do that is as follows: the new R two is going to be equal to. Um, minus R1 plus R2. I'm go first going to write the row 2 and then we'll come back and then fill it up with row 1. Uh, row 1 and row 3. So that is going to be negative 1 plus 1 will be 0. 1 plus 0 will be 1. And then negative 0 minus 1 will be negative 1. And then we have the partition here. And on the other side of the partition, negative 1 plus 0 will be negative 1. Negative 0 plus 1 will be positive 1. And then 0 plus 0 will be 0. So we'll close the brackets here. On the first row, we have 1, negative 1, 0. And then we have 1, 0, 0. And then in the third row, we have negative 6, 2, 3. And then we have on the other side of the partition 0, 0, 1. So now let us draw the line and and let us draw the line along the major diagonal and see where we are on the finish line. We wanted once along the major diagonal, we wanted a zero here, we got that. Next we'll look at this negative six and we want that location to be equal to zero. And the way to achieve that is as follows. Um, we're going to perform the row operation to achieve that. So first, I'm going to write that as, I'm going to write the row 3 first. The new R3 is going to be equal to 6 times row 1 plus row 3, like that. So when we do that, this is how it's going to come out. 6 times 1 minus 6, that will be equal to 0. And then 6 times negative 1 plus 2, 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, negative 6 plus 2 will be negative 4, 
and then 6 times 0 will be 0, 0 plus 3 will be equal to 3 and then we have the partition here and on the other side of the partition we have 6 times 1 is 6, 6 plus 0 will be 6 and then 6 times 0 will be 0 plus 0 will be 0 and then 6 times 0 is 0 plus 1 will be 1 so we'll close the brackets and then we'll come back and then write the first and second row which are 1, negative 1, 0 and then we have 1, 0, 0 and then we have 0, 1, negative 1 and then we have negative 1, positive 1 and then 0 okay let's draw the line along the major diagonal to see where we are we want we wanted zeros here we got that we wanted uh, we want a 0 in this location negative 4 we want a 0 in that location so the way to do that is as follows we're going to perform uh, the row operation one more time and then when we do that we're going to say the new R3 is going to be equal to 4 times R2 plus R3 and that will that will do do that that will be that will make that location go to zero so when we do that this is what we're going to come up with four times zero is zero plus zero will be zero and then four times one will be four four minus four that will be zero and then four times negative one is negative four negative four plus three will be negative one and we have the partition here and on the other side of the partition we have 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2 and then 4 times 4 times 1 will be 4 4, uh, 4 plus 0 will be equal to 4 and then 4 times 0 is 0 0 plus 1 will be 1 we'll close the brackets and then write the, row, write the rows uh, as before we have 1 negative 1 0 and then 1 0 0 and then in the second row we have 0 1 negative 1 and then negative 1 1 0 this is a 0 not a 6 so let me write that a little bit more clear yeah there we go and now let us draw the line along the major diagonal and then we wanted to achieve zeros in these locations we have achieved that we want a 1 in this location we want a 1 in that location and to, uh, to get that we're going to perform the row operations and then when we do that this is the way we can, uh, we can uh, this is the way we want to do that so that we get a positive 1 in that location so we're going to perform the row operation the new R3 the new R3 let me write that again the new R3 we can achieve by taking the existing R3 and divide it by negative 1 okay so 0 divided by negative 1 will be 0 0 divided by negative 1 will be 0 negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1 we'll put the partition there and then 2 divided by negative 1 will be negative 2 4 divided by negative 1 will be negative 4 1 divided by negative 1 will be negative 1 we'll come back and then fill up the fill up row ones and row one and row two which are one negative one zero and then we have one zero zero and then negative one one zero and then in here zero one and one okay so close the brackets draw this line along the major diagonal we have zeros below the diagonal we have some more elements above the diagonal so what we need to do is we want to make this negative one location go to zero and we can achieve that by performing the row operations and when we do the row operations this is how we, we, we can we can uh, arrive at that I'm going to write that here and then to get that location as equal to zero this is what we're going to do the new r1 is going to be equal to existing r1 plus r2 we're going to combine row 1 and row 2 to achieve that so 
when we do that 1 plus 0 will be 1 negative 1 plus 1 will be 0 this is 1 and then 0 minus 1 will be negative 1 we have the partition and then 1 minus 1 will be 0 0 plus 1 will be 1 and 0 plus 0 will be 0 and then in the second row we didn't do anything so we'll write them write those elements as is 0 1 negative 1 is what we had and then negative 1 1 0 in the third row we had 0 0 1 and then we had negative 2 negative 4 and negative 1 okay now let us draw the line along this major diagonal we have ones there we have zeros here that is all fine we have zeros here we want zeros in this negative one and then zero in this negative one location as well. So let us look at one at a time. So we'll make this location go to zero. And to achieve that, we're going to perform the row operation. And when we perform the row operation, this is how it's going to come out. So let me just move this a little bit more. And when we do that, we're going to write this one as the new R1 is going to be equal to existing R1 plus R3 this time. So when we do that, 1 plus 0 will be 1, 0 plus 0 will be 0, negative 1 plus 1 will be 0, and then on the other side of the partition, we have 0 minus 2 which will be negative 2, 1 minus 4 will be negative 3, 0 minus 1 will be minus 1, and then the second and third row come come down as is 0 1 negative 1 and then negative 1 1 0 and then 0 0 1 and then we have negative 2 negative 4 and then negative 1 like that so if we were to draw this line along the major diagonals we have ones along the major diagonal we have zeros in these locations below the diagonal and then we have zeros above the diagonals and the only one we need to change now is this we need to make that location go to zero and to achieve that we're going to perform the row operation and the way to achieve that is as follows um, the new R2 let me write the new R2 the new R2 is going to be let me write here the new R2 is going to be equal to existing R2 plus R3 okay existing R2 plus R3 this is R3 so let me write that and then we'll write the row 1 and row 3 um, after we perform this row operation so 0 plus 0 that will be 0 then 1 plus 0 will be 1 negative 1 plus 1 will be 0 we have the partition then on the right hand side of the partition negative 1 plus negative 2 will be negative 3 and then 1 minus 4 will be negative 3 and then 0 minus 1 will be minus 1 and therefore the we'll now come back and then write the first row and then the third row 1 0 0 and then we have negative 2 negative 3 and negative 1 the third row is 0 0 1 and then we have negative 2, negative 4, and negative 1. And then if we were to come back here and look at what we have on the major diagonal, we have 1s along the major diagonal. We have zeros in the, these locations. We have zeros above the major diagonal and below the major diagonal, and that is what we wanted to achieve. And this, by the way, is the identity matrix and on the right hand side of the partition that is our inverse matrix and we have achieved the answer that is the inverse matrix negative to the inverse of the given matrix A which we have found is as follows A inverse therefore is equal to is equal to negative 2 negative 3 negative 1 negative 3 negative 3 negative 1 negative 2 negative 4 negative 1 right we can also we could have also write written this out as negative 1 times because we have all negative signs inside uh, for these elements we can write this one out as 2 3 1 3 
3, 1, 2, 4, 1. We took the negative sign out because that was the constant. So we could have represented all the elements in the inverse matrix as positive numbers as well. So this is the way we want to be able to solve uh, problems related to inverse of a matrix. In my next presentation, we should look at some more examples related to inverse of a matrix.